and appreciate the beautiful information that we're going to see about this wonderful uh, piece of land that we are on right now. So if we say, take this to be the earth and we put on it the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn and we put the sine wave in there like that uh, and here are the solstice points here can you all see? Yeah. Uh, and so we see this sine wave that's the wave Walter Russell the great genius uh, said many years ago the secret of creation is in the wave that's the wave and the 12 signs or 30 degrees of that 30, 360 degrees of that circle of this arc of this wheel and so hence you see the cross of the solstice and the equinoxes there clearly that is the symbol that's that's the symbol of the earth in astrology yeah because they knew what they were talking about the earth gets this cross every year and so when we see all these crosses we see the constantine one any cross you see this beautiful um one that someone from Ireland, Aidan, came from Ireland to give me this silver Celtic cross, beautiful. When I was in Ecuador, I got this uh, jade stone made from um, in the temple of the sun on the middle of the earth on the equator. Cristobal, the high priest there, makes these. And uh, he gave me this. He's, he told me that I should wear this one. That's a chicana. A chicana, if you don't know what that is, it's going to be hard to... No, no, I was going to try and get that so you can see it but anyway um, it's it's based on this and it's based on the cross quarter days so it has eight sides to it not the four so you've got the, the four spoke wheel or you've got the, the eight spoke wheel or just the simple four spoke wheel but that's the wave that is the wave the secret of creation is in this wave that's why it's so important that they belittle this and in the churches, this is from the devil. Anything like this, any, anything of learning like this so that people can open their minds and hearts and, and look beyond the veil of Isis is from the devil or it's a pseudoscience. Pretty tricky how they do that. But obviously you guys aren't deceived. Yeah. And many are not deceived. They've been tortured. They've been killed, brutalised, ridiculed. But this has always been there. It's never disappeared. And as we will see, the beautiful Glastonbury Zodiac is just a marvel. It won't go away, never has, and it's there. All you've got to do is point to it. So what happens then? <clears throat> the ancients also taught that here is, it's not just the, day, the yearly cycle. <clears throat> we also have 6 a.m. here, 12 midday here, 6 p.m. over here, and 12 midnight over there. So... Without elaborating too much, I mean, it's pretty obvious how those two cycles, um, you know, correspond with each other. The daily cycle and the yearly cycle. For instance, here we have summer and in the daily cycle here we have the day. In the yearly cycle here we have winter and in the daily cycle here we have the night. One and the same thing. So we, won't, we don't need to really uh, elaborate on that. Third thing you, we need to put on here before we proceed is the human body. Now, <clears throat> there's a map with 12 segments of 30 degrees each along the ecliptic. This is a modern map showing the same science still persists today. And here is the key that they've left for us in, uh, well, this is masonry really but it's also Islam, Christianity, and Judaism, and Hinduism, and all of them, lock, stock, and barrel. There's not a one who does not um, uh, refer or reference or is based on this science. So as you can see, just as I've done here, <clears throat> here is March the 21st, the equinox. Here is June the 21st, the solstice. Here is... September 21st or 23rd, some put 23rd, that's more accurate because this is 10 days longer than this. The sun is above the line of truth or the earth 
10 days longer, 187 days here and 178 days below. So obviously this stretches out a little bit and that becomes 23rd, but I always like to use 21st, 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 21st and 21st. 21st of December, as we know, shortest day of the year. So we have longest day, shortest day, equal, equal points. And so here they, they show this quite clearly, March 21st, beauty when the sun is beautiful as it rises in the east in the land. The ruler of the land Aries is Mars. Mars, in the uh, Gaelic language, was Jesus. Yeah, yeah, Jesus. So Jesus rises. Our saviour has risen. Yeah, because every day, that's where the sun rises. In the east, in Aries, between 6 and 8 a.m. Every day. And this is the way the, the heavens are constructed. This is a symbolic arrangement of the heavens. And every day, this is what occurs. Aries always begins the day in the morning. Taurus, between 8 and 10, fixes the morning. Gemini then, the twins, break it apart and midday begins. Cancer, where everything starts going downhill. Leo is always there between 2 and 4. <laughs> yeah, because it's a, it's a sideways walking animal, you see, and the, uh, and the uh, astrologer said, well, this is why they placed the crab there, because once the sun reaches the top, it's got nowhere else to go but to go back down again. It's all up and down, up and down, up and down. And so Leo is between two and four, the hottest part of the day. It's also August, July, August, and the hottest part of the year. And there is the Virgin. She's always standing on the horizon in the west to receive the sun as it sets through her into the scales of Libra. This key here goes from Aries to Libra, whereas that one goes from Aries to Virgo. They're both correct, but here is the key. Suffice to say that that is the key. If you remember this key, you will understand theology, astrotheology, astrology, uh, chemistry, alchemy, biochemistry, all of the sciences. This is syncretism. And there is the wave, secret of creation is in the wave, this is the eight spoke wheel. Here we have the cardinal points and here we have the fixed points of the zodiac. The fixed points are very important. If you pay attention to those now, we'll understand a lot more by the end of the presentation. Taurus and Leo, fixed signs. You see they're pointing to the middle of the line, pointing to the middle of the, the bull. And then here it's pointing to the middle of Scorpio. Of course they imply the other six signs. Uh, without giving all the whole thing because this is a key it's the legend it's it's to understand the whole blueprint and they just give you a little bit of it see the sun reaches its strength at the top beauty in the morning strength midday and wisdom as it sets in the scales of justice libra now before before we uh Proceed. There's just one more thing that we need to place in here, and that will be <coughs> the man. Now, am I offending? Am I offending the sisters when I say the man and not the woman? No. Uh, yeah. That's beyond you guys. You know, <laughs> I know that. But suffice to say that man is from the hand. That's what it is. Man and woman are both man because man is the hand. Mano manual, manipulate, manage, manoeuvre, manifest. We are the manifestors because we've got the hand. So that's what humans are. And humidity, if you listened enough to Manly P. Hall, he will explain how the, um, the ancient philosophers said that, that the earth has a strange certain kind of miasma, humid. You know, it's a, it's a certain humidity. We are the, hum the, the race of humanity, the manifestors, with the manual, the hand. And of course, plural of man is men, isn't it? Man, men? Mm -hmm. Well, mens is the mind in Latin. And we are set apart from all the other animals by the hand and the mind, which also includes the heart, of course, the heart of mankind. Before we proceed, there is... Whoops. I had it up there. There is what we need to put along the ecliptic. 
<clears throat> so we have the head of the body here, Aries and Taurus, but in particular Aries because that's where we're going to start our little journey here now. And Pisces, the two fish, the two feet, touch the back of the head. So that road that you saw, that, that dominant road or whatever it is, um, that runs along the top of Aries' head, that would be right here, folks. So remember that. And so the human body goes through here, and that's Adam Kadmon. Why Adam Kadmon? Do we know who Adam Kadmon is? We all... They tell us in Scripture, truthfully, truly, that we are the Adamic race. That's 100% true. Absolutely, we are the Adamic race. Because... <clears throat> In astrology, the mother of all sciences, this is the ascendant. Mm. Okay, uh, I'll stick with black. <laughs> ascendant, this is the descendant. The sun ascends here, the sun descends here, and this line here is the meridian. Adam, Adam Kadmon. Yes, we are made in the image of Adam. As the Elohim say in Genesis chapter 2, let us make man in our image. This is who's talking. These 12 signs are talking. These are the passive energies of the universe and the seven that go around, seven and twelve, seven and twelve, seven and twelve, always those holy numbers, they are the Elohim. And they are the ones that say, let us make man in our image. And as every astrologer has ever said, the reason that there are different faces and different shapes of humanity is because those planets are always changing their positions and moving around and turning and twisting and churning in that cycle of necessity and never ever um, go back to their original zero point um, uh, before four million years have passed. It takes four million years for all those planets to zero again and start a new cycle. Um, Marcus Manilius, uh, Caesar Augustus's astrologer, said it's because of these movements that we have so many different faces and shapes in humanity. Let us proceed then, shall we? And back to Glastonbury. <clears throat> so in the part of Pisces, so you have High Street separating Pisces and Aries, right here, when you go down to streets. It's only a couple of miles down the road, isn't it? Right? And you'll have a street there called High Street. On the Pisces side, two brothers, <laughs> Quakers, founded Clark Rubber Shoes in the 1820s. That's 100 years before Catherine Maltwood. Went on to be the biggest shoe manufacturers probably in the world, if not definitely the UK. Right here down the road from Glastonbury. Right where the two feet are, two brothers, mind you, um, Cyrus and James. Whoops, I've gone backwards. Um, looks like I missed something there. Yep, okay. Um, so they were in the woolen tra rug trade, but one day James started making slippers from offcuts of the rugs. These slippers were called Brown Peters, but no one knows why. The public loved them, and an iconic brand was born. And there you have on uh, one side of the street, uh, would this be, let's have a look. Now there's Clark's Shoes, the largest shoe retailer. Clark's have been providing footwear for all the family since 1825, offering smart and casual styles for men, women, boys and girls. Clark's is renowned for its quality, craftsmanship and style. This is just ripped straight off the, um, the internet, hence, and this is the other side of the street, Aries, where all the woolen shops are. This is all, apparently all lined up. I couldn't get any pictures of these stores, but there's, I'm going to go in the next three days. But on one side you've got wool, Aries, on the other side you've got shoes, Pisces. It is interesting, absolutely. James Swagger um, taught me that when I was interviewing him about six months ago. And he's from Ireland. He, uh, anyone know James Swagger? Yeah, he's Irish, and he uh, does all the 
uh, mounds the, like uh, Old Grange and New Grange, etc. And he was telling me this in an interview. So I researched it because I've known about this since oh, my teen years. Uh, I was in Reader's Digest book club and I ordered a book, Mysterious Places of the World, and they had um, Catherine Maltwood's story in it. And I always remembered that. And since though I was uh, inclined to uh, being a Jehovah's Witness back then, I just sort of put it on the... <laughs> you know, you take note of these things, you store them in, store them in your heart, but of course, uh, you know, um, the party line is to... Um, when you're in the uh, fictional churches, is to imagine that this is somehow the work of the devil. The devil goes around doing all these things, you see, for his entertainment and ours. <laughs> now, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at Anthony Thorley's... He's, he is actually... He does tours here, and he has deciphered three of the signs, and that's what we're going to do now before the break. We'll just have a look uh, at Aries. We'll have a look at Taurus and Pisces. Now, for the very reason that, uh, not for lack of time, but um, I don't think he's actually done the other nine signs. And when he does, and I hope this prompts some of you locals to want to reach out to some of these guys and survey these signs and see what you can find, because there will be a treasure trove. I'm sure if I had a year here, I'm sure I'd discover one or two interesting things. I'd love to. Uh, but this is... Um, uh, Megalithomania by Anthony Thorley. Uh, I bought this uh, DVD. Very, very impressed with his work. Uh, please do research this guy. He's a local. And um, this is the sort of stuff that he writes. I, this, again, this is from Walking the Zodiac Aries, the real, uh, the alchemicaljourney.co.uk. And I'm just going to read this. So. <clears throat> Please bear with me. This is going to be easier to read because it's, it's much better writing. <laughs> we, make our, we then make our customary trip to the hamlet of Wag near Langport. I hope I'm getting these names right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. I did say uh, Leo Minster the other day. Um, no. <laughs> Linster. Yeah. yeah. And I did stuff up uh, Leicester too. <laughs> yeah. I won't say what I said. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, near Langport on the dog's tail, where we formalise our invitation to our canine friend through a beautiful ritual. Now our journey into the Zodiac proper can begin. A 20 minute drive and we find ourselves on Walton Hill. Walton Hill is here. This is street where, the, so here we have Pisces and here we have Aries and this is where the, the wool shops and the shoe shops are. Now we're, we're Travelling along here, 20 minute drive down to Walton, a small town here. <clears throat> On the foot of the Aries figure, not a ram, but a more traditional paschal lamb with its head reverted, a symbol long associated with Aries and spring equinox rites. From Walton Hill, we enjoy a lovely view of the twin hills of Gemini and the watery rhines of Cancer. We then walk across the animal's rump to Walton passing sheep fields that have helped to make this part of Somerset... Oops. Is it Somerset? Somerset is a county. Somerset, yeah. Oh, Somerset. yeah, that's where I'm getting confused. OK. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, beautiful. Aptly famous for its lamb's wool. At Walton Church, we find two clear Aryan references. In the particularly bright and beautiful stained glass at its store at its story of Abraham and Isaac with the western end. First there is the ram in the thicket, the ram who is sacrificed in Isaac's place, and then there is Christ shown as, a, as the good shepherd holding the lamb. The paschal lamb of the Jewish Passover is also carved onto the front, onto the front, and I was particularly excited to find a dove, symbol of Libra, Aries opposite number carved on its opposite side. Imagine if Anthony just spent a couple of years here what he would find out. I mean, this is a whole bunch of stuff. You go to this cathedral and you see the Ann, the, uh, sorry, the Ran, <laughs> the I am, uh, being uh, sacrificed because that's Aries. It's the Ran. Of course you're going to find that in Walton. It will be in Aries. <laughs> this is the sort of thing that, as above, so below, that is happening all around the planet. 
remember the words of Alvin Boyd Kuhn, how he said that this is what the ancients did. They did this to remind them of where they come from, not to forget their original home in the heavens, as above, so below. <clears throat> Next, we walk along the main road to Street, and then along its high street. Our zodiac is predominantly a green and rustic paradise, but with its bustling retail centre comprising a large part of the Aries figure. We find ourselves on this occasion having to investigate shops and businesses to find out synchronicities. As we look at our zodiac map, we notice how the high street actually demarcates the boundary between the Aries figure and one of the Piscean fish, and that on the Aries side of the street we find all the lamb's wool shops, while on the Pisces side we find all the Clark shoes, uh, shoe shops. Bearing in mind that Pisces rule the feet, of course, on the map the fish seem to be leaping like a fabled salmon, the fabled salmon of inspiration out of the lamb's head. It makes me think of the inspired idea that James Clark had one day in 1825 whilst working at the tannery amongst the sheepskin rugs. Slippers! Ex exclaimed the budding entrepreneur in true Aries style. And so it was that the Clark's sheepskin slipper was born. Taurus, our alchemical foray into Glastonbury's Temple of the Stars this month, led so expertly, expertly by Anthony Thorley, took us into Taurus the Bull, one of the most stunning walks on our Zodiac tour. And at such a beautiful time of the year, Everything about it resonates with the sensuous, abundant gifts of nature. Of course, that's Taurus. Sensuous, Venus, prosperity, having things, material things. Nothing wrong with that. It's just that's the sign. The sign is inclined to this. Every, um, each month, we imagine ourselves walking the images of the sky on the earth, tracing the outlines of the zodiac figures, revealing rich synchronicities for people. The zodiac seems to possess a distinct divinatory power that can help shift our perspective, providing us with inspired guidance or offering an answer to a question or concern. This year we entered the Taurus figure just prior to the ingress of the sun into that sign in the heavens. The figure stretches from the edge of Butley Wood, tracing the contour of Collard Hill to the junction with the B33151. Is that correct? Good and incorporating the ancient village of Compton. Sometimes, you know, uh, there's mistakes and typos, so just checking. We'd already spent the previous day immersing ourselves in the Taurus perspective, exploring Minoan myths, Beltane, and other Taurian traditions and ceremonies. And we embodied our learning through music, movement, guided imagery, and a number of alchemical processes related to Taurian themes. And we ate cheese, of course. Haha. <laughs> So as we arrived at the tip of the bull's horn at noon, we were more than ready for a vivid encounter with this most earthy and sensuous of zodiac signs. Perch it, perched on the horn tip above Coombe ho Coom Hollow, we stood for several minutes soaking up the sounds and smells of this fertile season and taking in the most spectacular view over the hill village of Compton Dundon and the twin hills of Gemini. And of course, thanks to our brother, Dundon means twin twin. Twice. Soaking up the sounds and smell of this foot. Uh, yeah. From there we walked slowly and deliberately, as Taurus demands, in silent reverie hmm, along the length of the horn, skirting Hatch Hill and drinking in the beauty of this sumptuous landscape through our senses. I've chosen to read through this so we can take the walk with this group of people that are doing this. You know? And it's lovely to have people enlightened enough to have their minds open enough and to, to do this for us, you know. Um, <clears throat> how long would it take each one of us to go around doing that? So I appreciate the, the great work that Anthony Thorley has done on this beautiful website. Our walk then took us along Compton Street, once home to a remarkable concentration of five cattle farms, and we passed Law's Farm with its fabulous Longhorn, situated proudly above the barn door. We walked up as far as the old market cross on the bull's snout, following an ancient paved pilgrim's path that still runs all the way from the old chapel at Trace Farm to St Dundon. The cross approximately marks one of two sacred crossover points where the Milky Way meets the ecliptic in the heavens. 
this one being between the constellations of Taurus and Gemini, mirrored here in our landscape zodiac in corresponding figures. What he's saying basically is this, and you can have a look at any star map on the computer. Uh, let's make that small sine wave a heap bigger, shall we? And here now is the Tropic of Cancer, and here is the Tropic of Capricorn, and there is the cross. So when you mark out Aries and Taurus, here is what, what he's talking about. They are they're taking a walk through Taurus. They've just been through Aries, and we've seen here the woolen shops, and here are the shoe shops on one other side of the street. And then we find a cathedral with Abraham sacrificing the ram and the, and the Jewish symbolism there, because it's Aries. Then we come to Taurus, and we see the horn and all of this Taurian stuff. And what he's saying is the two mounds of Gemini, that this, uh, <coughs> this cross crosses here, where the ancients knew that this is the plane of the Milky Way. And it goes through uh, Scorpio and Sag here, and Taurus and Gemini here. This is, the, this is the plane of the Milky Way. So, of course, it's in the land. It has to be. <laughs> uh, <coughs> A bit more. Our route then took us to the Bullseye at Trey's farm with a ri rifle range nearby until recent times. Rifle ranges have uh, bullseyes, don't they, that you shoot at. Followed by a steep climb along the ancient trackway. We passed through a lover's arch, of course, what you do with the sign of Venus ruling over it, woven between two trees which Venus herself might have sanctioned, only to be met by the Hood Monument a rather overstated protrusion at the base of the bull's horns. We enjoyed a clear view from here across to Glastonbury Tall before walking back to our cars along the top, the, uh, top part of the horn, again in silence, again soaking up the sublime pleasures of this beautiful place. I entered this zodiac figure with questions relating to classically Taurian issues around money and security and I came out of it much more settled in myself with a more grounded sense of having enough and being very grateful and appreciative of the simple pleasures of life. Thank you, Taurus. And we jump all the way down to Pisces now. So uh, I did search for all the other nine articles. If any of you guys find them, please email them to me because... Oh, brother, can you come up, please, and, and, and just... Um, Tell, tell that to the camera so people can uh, yeah. and give your um, your details. These are your articles, are they? Yeah. Oh, the man know. himself. I didn't know you could show that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Anthony Thorley and myself have been taking groups around the Glastonbury Zodiac for the last five years. And these articles were written about four years ago. And um, yeah, we take people, you know, deep into the mysteries of the, of the Zodiac. Fantastic. And, um, and it's you know it's a it's a it's a process of of inner transformation. It's, it's where you find your you know you can you can connect you know as you were talking about the head to the feet. You connect that back together. You connect the seasons back together. You can connect the whole cycle back together. Life starts to make sense again. You start to reconnect to the cosmos again. And that I think that's very powerful. And I think Catherine Maltwood one of our gifts to us is that we is that we get to um, we yep. have to do that and you know there's something you know that the, the, what, what's always so compelling is that every time we walk in the, in the figures new synchronicities emerge the, the lore LORE of the zodiac continues every time we walk in the figures and anyone I'm sure lots of people here have <coughs> walked the zodiac are you going to be doing the other signs we do it every, we've done it every month for five years in every sign and every sign's written we've just not found, and they're all there. These articles were all published in the Oracle. Wonderful. So, and that must reveal some just some amazing stuff. I mean, imagine the two hills of Gemini, the Argo. There must be some great things there and coincidences. So, if you can. That line, by the way, that line that you're saying was a road going across yes. the area, so that's the Michael line, which runs from Borough Bridge Mount to the tour. That's part of it. It's 11 miles. That it's the micro line, is it? The Michael. 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 <laughs> Archangel, Archangel Michael. Michael. You need to look up the Michael line, the ley line that runs across the country. The Michael line. Well, you know that the Michael Mary line now. There you go, Michael Mary. That's, that's what that line is. Well.